my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a chatty video. I'm going to talk about what's going on, been going on in my life and I am also preparing for an art market that I'm going to have some of my macrame in tomorrow. So I'm going to talk about how I am doing that, what I've made for it and how I'm preparing. Also I have some house projects coming up that I'm going to talk about and tutorials coming out. So if you'd like to hear about any of that, stay tuned. So if you follow me on any social media outlets besides this one, uh, you already know that I, or you might already know, that I am pregnant and my husband and I are expecting our first child this February. We are super, super, super excited and it also explains why I haven't put out as much content as I would like to and there for a little while I was able to do a lot of projects but here lately I just have been really run down, really tired um, and very, very, very sick. So I'm finally getting some energy back, but I know that that is not going to last forever. Um, I'm in my second trimester right now. I'm actually 21 weeks right now. And um, I know that once I get into my third trimester, things might change for me a little bit. And then obviously when we have our baby, uh, things are definitely going to change. But I'm trying to prepare for that as much as I can. My husband knows that I have so many projects I want to do before this baby gets here and we have a lot a lot of work to do. But I also just want to get some momentum going on YouTube, hopefully get um, some more subscribers and just um, ideas and things that I can be doing while I'm home with the baby since I will be staying home. So that is what's been going on with me. That is the only life update that I have right now. Um, tomorrow I'm going to be in the Fruitive uh, Art Market. It's a, Fruitive is a local vegan restaurant here in Virginia or in Hampton Roads um, area. They have a location in, they have two locations in Norfolk, um, a location in Virginia Beach, and I, they have a location in DC as well, which I haven't been to. Um, but they're all vegan and they have fresh pressed juice and really delicious food. We were invited for their summer solstice uh, dinner we went to back in, I think it was in June, and it was amazing. They had this long, beautiful table that was decorated and they served, I don't know how many courses for dinner, but they had this, just this amazing spread. When we first got there, they had all of these vegan cheeses. Um, I was vegan for a really long time. I don't like to think of myself as a failed vegan. I'll probably go back to it at some point. It just wasn't working for me any longer. Once I started training at my gym and getting more into lifting, I decided that I wanted more protein in my diet. But when I was vegan for the seven, almost eight years, I was really into vegan cheese and they killed the vegan cheese game. The vegan cheese was amazing. Um, they had really good cocktails and mocktails and they just did this like four or five course spread that was delicious. So if you're local and you live in this part of Virginia, you should definitely check out Fruitive. And then um, their art markets are amazing. This is the third one that I've done. Every artist that shows up is just so talented. The work is amazing. It's very diverse. Um, I'll be there doing macrame. This is their fall one. They did a spring one and then they also did a fall one before that. So I imagine there'll be another spring one coming up in 2019. But behind me, I have um, some of the things that I've been making to prepare for the market tomorrow. I'm not going super, super out of my way to make a ton of stuff. It is a sort of small market. I would be surprised if it's any bigger than it has been the last couple years. Um, but I've done really well with it. I've just kind of focused on smaller items. Some of the bigger ones that I was trying to sell in past years have just have not done really well. I think people who are shopping, they're out. Um, they want to buy little small things from each person and can't necessarily afford to buy one large item from one vendor unless they're dedicated, like they just love it. So anyway, some of the things I have behind me, um, <clears throat> my favorite thing that I've made recently is uh, macrame mandala. This is just so beautiful. It could go on the wall, it could lay on a table. Um, really easy to make a lot more rope than I thought it would be. I'm thinking about doing a tutorial. Oh, there's an extra piece. I'm thinking about doing a tutorial for one of these coming up. Um, I made quite a few. This one actually looks more like a snowflake. Um, and then this one reminds me more of a mandala. Um, and then this one I made to look like a moon. I was kind of inspired by something I saw on Pinterest. And I decided to make it a little bit um, asymmetrical. So that's really cool. 
This is just a very um, simple wall hanging. I thought about keeping this for my nursery because I love it. I don't know, is it teardrop shaped? Pretty cool, right? I made quite a few minis. Um, these are just really small wall hangings. I think they're a little bit more affordable for most people and they can kind of be stuck anywhere in your house, like on a gallery wall or um, just just kind of anywhere rather than showcasing like or taking up this huge area on a wall like a large piece of art would. And then I have lots of plant hangers. These are all kind of the same. I decided to keep it really simple and just do make it a little bit more uniform. Last time that I did a market I had made all of these different unique plant hangers and it seemed like some did better than others and I'm obsessed with this crown knot. I just love it. So I just did the same thing over and over again. I think it's a really beautiful design. Um, and then a couple of smaller ones. I have a few air plants um, and holders and so just these are just more simple small plant hangers. I also made, if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing earrings. Um, these, <laughs> I was really against the macrame earring and jewelry, I don't know, fad that I was seeing on Instagram and I don't know, something happened, I changed my mind. I really love these. So um, I have quite a few of them for sale tomorrow. I'm really excited about that. Here's a couple other pair, um, some larger blue ones and some smaller black ones. Um, really easy, like if you're planning to do an art market, I bought cardstock and printed these and then cut them out and put little holes for the earrings. They don't have to be perfect. Um, arts and craft markets are for people who are making things at home. It's handmade. So I think you have to give yourself a little bit of a break sometimes. It's not going to look cookie cutter um, perfect like it's out of a boutique. Um, I'm trying to have some grace in all of it and just do what I can. It's just me. I'm still working and it, this is not my full-time job. So I also made some macrame like bottle covers. I don't really know how to uh, describe these, but um, they could like this one is a bottle. It has a little cork in the top and I think it'd be perfect to like put mouthwash in <laughs> or as just decoration. And then this one, you could put a candle um, or you could put flowers in it. It could be a vase or a candle holder but I just love these. Like they're so 70s to me and I think they're so beautiful. I also have some other air plant holders. Um, I bought these glass air plant containers and I bought the air plants off of Amazon. They were really inexpensive. Um, and then I just made the little hangers for them and I think they're so unique. So tomorrow for the art market, I'm just going to have a table with a tablecloth. I'll have everything. Um, that can be laid on the table uh, on the table and then I'll also have I have one more coat rack like this And so I'll be able to hang a lot of my plant hangers and wall hangs on that very simple um, If you're somebody who does macrame and wants to get involved in a local craft and art show or market um, You don't need a lot of money to start up if you're already making things and you have an inventory That's really all you need. I this is my third market that I will have done and I just got business cards last week. Um, my first one, I literally wrote all of my business cards out by hand on cardstock and I gave a ton of them out and I got a ton of Instagram followers after that. Not a ton, but I got a quite a few who I know found me from the art market. And my point is, is that it doesn't have to be super polished and super perfect when you're first starting out. Once you get some momentum and you start getting a little bit of money from it, um, you can afford to do some of the more polished looking things. But in the beginning, do what you can and remember that you're just one person and everything is handmade and that is what makes it unique. It's coming from a person. It's not coming from Walmart or Target. If you notice a difference between some of the things that I've made and some of the things you'll see in Target, it's quality. Um, quality of the rope and just intricacy of the details of the patterns. Like everything I make is not from a pattern, mostly is not from a pattern. It's literally from an idea or inspiration, something that I saw, and then I just kind of go for it. And sometimes I run out of rope and I panic <laughs> and I figure it out. And sometimes you have to take things apart and start over again. And sometimes things work out and it's great. Um, 
As far as house projects go, I do have a couple of them coming up. If you're somebody who likes to follow my channel because of the house projects that I do, I'm going to be making some nightstands. Um, probably next week I'm going to start that. I bought some hairpin legs for the nightstands, which I've been seeing everywhere. I'm obsessed. I think they're so cool. They were a little more money than I wanted to spend for just table legs, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I, I'm really excited to do nightstands and um, I have a really great idea for them. It's very, very simple. I am no woodworker, but I think I can pull this off and I'm probably going to do a tutorial for it as well. If you're not sure what hairpin legs are, oh. this is a hairpin leg. And so there'll be four of them on the nightstand. Um, and then my husband and I are doing crown molding in our house right now. We're actually just doing it from, um, let me think, it's just a one by, it's a one by six and a one by three. Um, the one by six goes against the wall and then the one by three goes against the ceiling. And this is the crown molding that we are doing, very simple. Super, super simple, and it will have to obviously be caulked and filled in between, but a uh, very, very simple and easy project. You can see where we ended, and we have to continue on when we buy some more materials. We were in Florida visiting with a friend, and we went into a rental home that she was um, checking on, and they had this very simple crown molding just made with... Um, just like little, like the same thing we're using, one by one by fours or one by threes, and like one by six, and it was so simple. And we've been thinking about crown molding for a while, and we were going to spend all this money ordering this foam crown molding that it just was going to be very costly. And this is definitely not as costly. And I'm really excited to get that done and just finish it. The next thing we're going to do after that is our whole third floor. We're going to get done. Um, get the carpet removed from it and put laminate flooring in it. And I'm having a little bit of trouble finding somewhere that is inexpensive. Uh, hopefully this weekend we'll get some time to go out and get a couple more quotes. The first quote we got for 822 square feet was like seven grand with labor. Um, it was just crazy. I think we were picking a laminate style that was a little expensive. So we've probably got to back down on that and hopefully find a place that has um, cheaper labor. Uh, it's not something that I'm willing to take on at this point in my pregnancy. Otherwise, if I wasn't pregnant, I would be on my hands and knees doing it myself. I've watched tons of YouTube videos on laminate flooring, and it's definitely something that you can do yourself. Uh, I think at this point it would just be easier for us to have it done. If you've watched my um, staircase video where I ripped the, stair, uh, ripped the carpet off my stairs, you'll know that that carpet that was on my stairs is the same exact carpet that's on my third floor. And it is, in my opinion, just, I don't wanna say it's hideous, but it's not what I want in my nursery. It's not what I really want in my bedroom. It'd be re really nice to just have like laminate flooring throughout and be able to do really beautiful big area rugs. In fact, I already bought one from West Elm um, for the nursery, which I can't wait to just put my nursery together, but I have to do the flooring first. So that is what's coming up. Hopefully some good uh, home, home project tutorials coming out of it. And also if you see anything that I made recently that you would like to see a tutorial on macrame wise, please leave me a comment below and let me know which item you would like to see a tutorial on. I'm definitely going to have some more macrame tutorials coming out soon. I also need to do some tutorials on basic knots. Uh, there are some on YouTube right now, but I don't know. I think I need to do some myself. So if you're not already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And thanks for checking this video out. I will see you on my next project.